Hello followers, welcome to this video. Let's see quickly and shortly all you need to know to get off to a good start in the latest Pinnacle Studio 20. Please leave us comments to improve our next guides on this software. Pinnacle Studio is one of the best software products used for video editing, media management, and disk menus. Let's get a general overview on all the main features. When you open Pinnacle for the first time, you will see a sample video project shown on the edit workspace as you see at the top. This project is composed by several media put together including pictures, videos, text, music, and speech all inside rows called tracks below. That's what a pinnacle project looks like. To start with a new vacant project go to file, new, and then to movie. First thing to do is to import all media such as pictures, videos, and audio files. If these are inside your computer, you can directly import them by clicking and dragging them on the navigation panel located at the top right corner of your workspace. A new green Collections tab opens, showing all your own files. You can also go to the Import button at the top right corner to import other media. From the Studio Importer that opens, Choose to capture from your webcam, get any file from a disk, or browse your computer folders to find your media. Select your interested files by clicking in the top right corner box. Or use Check All and Uncheck All below to select or deselect all the files in one shot. More on the right, under Import Mode, you can select the way to import your files. If you select Copy, you will copy all of your selected files in the Pinnacle Studio Media folder. Otherwise, choose Link to just link all those files to use them in your project. Once all the files are selected, just go to Start Import at the bottom. The navigation panel also collects all the main features and media inside Pinnacle Studio. Media Clips, under Library Media in blue, full saved projects under projects in violet, your latest imported files under collections in green, and all extra content such as effects, transitions, and titles under content in yellow. You can also use the organized workspace to check all the content in detail. Any selected media inside the navigation panel can be observed through the preview window on the right. Use the player at the bottom to play back any video or audio file selected. You can also regulate the playback speed by clicking and dragging the tuner. Once the files are collected and selected from the navigation panel, you can import them on your project by dragging and dropping them on the timeline below. This is composed by several audio video tracks each containing media files as clips. There are different kinds of clips you can import depending on their background colors. Pictures and photos are in dark blue with a small thumbnail showing a preview of them. Audio clips are in yellow and show their sound waveform preview on them. Text is in green and shows a preview of it. Whereas videos are in blue showing both thumbnails on top and audio waveform at the bottom. While creating your video, it is fundamental to check how the video is being built. If you click right above or on the timeline itself below, you will fix a red playhead. If you check the preview, this shows how your project looks like in the exact time frame the red playhead is being placed. In this way, if you click and drag the playhead from its upper gray marker, or by using your mouse wheel, you can check your project frame by frame forwards and backwards. In this case, the preview will be in timeline mode, which means showing your whole project with the clips inside your audio video tracks. The other source mode is used to preview your media selected from the navigation panel. Remember that the order of the audio video tracks is very important. In fact, if you have clips on different tracks that overlap in time, the ones on the upper track are shown above all others more below. Let's see how to work with the clips inside your timeline. 
You can click and drag a clip and move it in time, on the same or on a different track. This can cause loadings, shown through progress bars above the timeline. These are used to optimize the output preview when you play back the project. To stretch or shorten the time length of a clip, approach its edges until your pointer changes the shape into an arrow. When it is directed outside the edge of the clip, click and drag. You will stretch or shorten the clip without affecting any gap from the previous or the following clip. If you click and drag with the arrow on the opposite side, you will manage the time gap between the interested clip and the next one. Pay attention when you stretch a video or an audio clip to cover their full duration. If you do so, the clip will be stretched the same, but by using the last video frame with no audio at all. This part is represented in red color. To cut, copy, paste, or delete clips, just right click. Whereas, if you make a mistake, use Ctrl and Z, or the undo button under File to undo. To split a clip in two places, fix the playhead on where you want it to split, and then press the N key from your keyboard, or click on Split Clips. Let's see how to manage and edit the tracks inside your timeline. You can zoom in and out by holding Ctrl down and using your mouse wheel. By default, you have four tracks available. To add new tracks, click on the top button. To delete a track instead, right-click on one and go to Delete Track. This removes all the clips inside such track too. On the left, you have a full list of audio video tracks and their settings. Each one is recognized with a name that you can change by clicking once inside. Next to it, there are several useful icons. Use the lock icon to lock or unlock the track. All clips inside a locked track can't be edited or modified. Use the eye icon to hide all the video, picture, and text clips it contains. Use the loudspeaker icon to mute the track in order to mute all its audio clips inside. You can also adjust precisely the volume of each track by opening the volume control bars with the first icon more above. You have two bars you can use to regulate the volume. Use the orange one to adjust the volume of the overall track content, and use the green one to regulate just the volume of the clip where your playhead is placed. You can also regulate the volume of your overall project, also called master volume, by using the orange bar at the very bottom. To adjust the volume in the correct way, make sure to check on the dB meters. These should never reach red values or you risk audio saturation. With Pinnacle Studio, you can also add text or titles. If you click on the text icon, you will open the title editor used to create, edit, and customize your piece of text. Type in, click and drag to move the text through the video preview, and use the white nodes to scale and rotate. Use the right panel to adjust the font size, style, and distribution under text settings. Or add effects, glow, and shadows under Look Settings. When you click on OK below, the text clip will be added inside your timeline. Double click on it to open it again on the title editor. Pinnacle has loads of effects and transitions that are ready to use that can be applied on videos, pictures, and also audio clips. From the navigation panel, you can select the right effects and transitions from the full list available. Under Effects, you can find several video and audio effects. Click on one to select it and check it through the preview. Then just drag and drop it on a media clip. This will show a pink line indicating that an effect has been applied to it. You can also add multiple effects on a single clip of course. Use Ctrl and Z to undo. Under the Transitions tab, 
you can drag and drop transitions on the edges of a clip to add fade in and fade out transitions. You can also add a transition between two clips if these are put close enough. Also, you can change the transition length by clicking and dragging it. If you reduce it to zero, you will simply remove it. To change the kind of transition, drag and drop there another one from the navigation panel. When your project is finished, save it by going to File, and then to Save Movie As. These are saved in a .axp format, used to open your project any time to edit it back. But, if you want to obtain the final video from your saved project, you have to render it and export it. First of all, under Timeline Settings, adjust the Project Aspect Ratio and the Frame Rate to be used. Then, go to the Export button above the Preview. Here, under Export Type, choose to render your video on your computer, on a disk, or online on a cloud service, or on a device. This will also set the right options to choose under Settings. In particular, if you choose to render in your computer an MPG4 under Settings, you can choose to render an Ultra 4K HD video to upload in YouTube. Then, go to Start Export Below to render your video. By default, Pinnacle renders until the last clip ends. But, if you need to render a specific part of your project, you can fix the Mark In and the Mark Out markers on the timeline. Thanks for watching this video. Follow us for more amazing guides and tutorials.